Welcome to another episode of Cyber Secrets. In this episode, we will cover the Tor Hidden Services. The Tor Network is a system of proxy servers that use multiple layers of encryption. This method is called onion routing, and it was designed by the U.S. Navy for security and anonymity of its users. The goal was for agents or even reporters to be in a hostile or censor-ridden country and still be able to communicate with the outside world without fear of it being caught, or even worse. The onion routing has evolved over the years, and several networks are now based off that methodology. A hidden service, that is a web service in the darknet. It's built to be anonymous and can only be accessed through the darknet that it was specifically designed for, such as a Tor network. The Tor hidden service would be a hidden service that has a .onion address and only people with inside the Tor network can access that onion address. Onion routing is just some of the many darknets that are out there, and we're going to talk a little bit about specifically about Tor and what can be found on Tor. Information Warfare Center, or IWC, has put together a version of portable apps that contains all the files needed to connect to the Tor network, set up a web server, and start hosting hidden services from just a USB thumb drive. It's mobile, and it's easy. Let's start with opening up portable apps. Right here you see XAMP and the Tor Browser Bundle. Since we will be setting up a hidden service on the Tor network, we will start off by clicking on XAMP Control Panel. So you can see this control panel is a portable web server that has compiled Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl, and this is all pre-installed and in a standalone package. Apache is a web server that we will use, and the MySQL is the database backend that is needed for packages included in this setup, such as Zencart and PHPB. This means that as soon as you hit Apache and hit Start, it'll tell you if it's running or not. If you look at under the ports, you see port 80 and port 443. Now we're going to click on MySQL. And again, keep an eye on the log area. It looks like MySQL is running just fine on port 3306. Now, we're going to need to test this before we go any further. So first thing we're going to want to do, let's go ahead and go ahead and start the Tor Browser Bundle in the background. Now, you see the Tor Browser Bundle. Now that this has popped up, take note about this IP address. That IP address is not your IP address. This IP address is actually the exit portal outside of Portable Apps. This means you've bounced through several different proxies, and this is the exit relay within the Tor network. Do not use this address. It is not your address. It's somebody else, probably on the other side of the earth. So at this point, we have the Tor Browser Bundle that's up and running. We have Apache up and running and MySQL up and running. So now what we're going to do is set up a hidden service. A hidden service is going to have a .onion address because we're on the .onion network. Now we're going to set up a hidden service. How we do that in Vidalia is go to Settings. And then once you're in settings, you want to left click on services. You see in here, I'm going to go ahead and remove this service and start from scratch. I'm going to hit plus. In the directory path, we'll go ahead and find the place we want to put it, which is going to be in the Tor browser. Select this folder. And this is going to be the area where the files are going to be located. The files are your secret keys. If anybody were to take these keys, they would effectively take over your entire domain. So at this point, since we do have Apache running on port 80, we'll put 80 in this port, and then we'll put 
127.0.0.1 right in this area. We'll go and hit OK. And we always want to verify the settings. So we'll go back into settings, go back into services, and now we can see the settings still there. And this is our onion address on the left hand side. On the right hand side, there's a little button that says copy any address of selected service to clipboard. This is the easiest way to make sure that you have your .onion address. Let's go ahead and click on that. And then in the browser, we'll go and open up a new window. We'll make sure that we have it copied. This is our dot onion address in the top side. Now we're going to go ahead and hit enter. This sometimes takes a few minutes to propagate through the network. So the very first time you put it in, it may not show up. But if you wait five minutes, it should pop up. Looks like it is going through. What IWC did was they also added a couple other sites for you. They added a market. And this market is based off a of Zencart. They've also added a PHP board. So just B-O-R-A-D, then enter. And as that's loading, we'll go back to the market. And as you can see, it's a fully functional Zen cart. Now, we can go back to the bulletin board. And now that we're back in the bulletin board, you can see that it's now popped up. So it's not the fastest network in the world, but it is a hidden service on the Tor network. Now you can see the website, the market, and the board. Configure these however you want. Just remember that security is always a concern. Keep everything up to date, test your code, and take all the precautions you normally would running a web server. Now that you have your own hidden services running, Let's take a look at some other services that are on the dark get or on this dot onion space. Keep in mind, many of the sites in the dark net are of black market or used for dark purposes. Not all dark net services are evil, but uh, just any link on the internet or service web or the deep webs, there's always a CD underbelly to them. Now, to get your curiosity out of the way, what we're going to do is go to some of those CD websites. For example, the Silk Road. The Silk Road's been around for a while, and it is one of the many black market sites out there. So if we go to their specific address, Silk Road, VB, 5PIZ, 3R, dot onion, slash index, we'll need to wait for a little bit before it starts to come through. While we're waiting, we're also going to try to go to Atlantis. Atlantis is a new black market. Most of these black markets specialize or um, use Bitcoin currency. Atlantis is actually using another cryptocurrency called Litecoins. So at this point, we'll go ahead again, start loading all three sites because sometimes it does take a while to go to these sites. And we'll start off with Silk Road. You do have to log in. And I'll start the login process for the black market reloaded. Now let's talk about these three sites. There's the Silk Road, Atlantis, and Black Market Reloaded. The interesting thing about these sites, Silk Road, deals a lot with drugs. If you see the number right here, 
over 12,000 different drug sales within the site. They used to be open to sell anything and everything. However, a while back ago, the Silk Road decided to stop selling arms or do an arms trade. Going over to Black Market Reloaded, as you can see under weapons, they still sell firearms, explosives, and ammunition. Atlantis sells a lot of things as well. But again, if you look, you do not see firearms. You do see fireworks and some other items. But the biggest difference between Black Market, Silk Road, versus Atlantis is Atlantis uses the cryptocurrency Litecoin instead of just doing Bitcoin. Black Market, Silk Road, and the majority of the other sites on the Darknet, uh, or the Tor Darknet, are using Bitcoin. So as a recap, the Tor Hidden Service is a great way to set up a web server or some sort of other uh, web service in a Darknet. Tor Hidden Service is going to be specifically a .onion address because it's using the .onion and the Tor network. If you were using something like I2P, it'd be another address as well, and it, .onions would not be able to communicate with it. With that said, there's a lot of bad things out there on the internet. There's a lot of bad things out there on all the dark nets. Be aware. Don't, of course, break the law. And have fun. The Cyber Secrets web series covers computer forensics, hacking, and everything in between.